What's up guys, Coach David here at OTL Fitness in Austin, Texas, and I'm gonna do a video today on one of our favorite machines here at the gym, the Concept2 Skier. Obviously Concept2 being the same company that also makes the rowers. We love this machine. And I feel like Concept2 should be paying me for this, but they're not. Um, why do we love it? It's a great conditioning tool. It's also one of those tools that it's about, it can also be about the amount of power that you put into it, so um, it doesn't have to be an endurance tool. People use that word all the time, like, oh, you're an endurance gym just because we use these machines. Not true. You can be a power athlete as well and generate tons of power out of things like the Concept2 skier. Now, when you're approaching the skier, I'm sure there are tons of technique different techniques uh, just like there are in the rower. And guys, it's okay to have your own. I've done rowing things before and everybody has their opinion on it. That's great. I love that people have their opinion. But remember, this is our approach. We also had Concept2 actually come in and teach a program on both the rowing technique and the skier technique. So that mix in with things that we have done over time and that we've seen work best with our clients, we start to utilize inside the uh, skier. So okay, quick wardrobe change, guys. Um, so the concept to skier, let's talk about the basic components first. Remember, this uh, is for someone who's never been on a skier before. We start with the handles, wow. These handles have great grip on them. Notice this little slope here, guys. When you're holding the handles, take the karate chopping portion of your hand, and that is where your hand will go on these handles. You don't have to get a death grip on these handles, just a nice, loving squeeze on the handles. We've got your ropes here. Guys, the ropes need to be well-maintained. You need Sometimes they get really tight, and it will shorten up the handle length. So you can kind of go through here and pull that rope and untangle the rope, but the best thing to do, guys, is about every six months to every year, just buy new ropes and reassemble it from the, uh, from the ropes from the entirety from the inside. Wow, that was a mouthful right there. Um, the next part is the screen. Wow, the screen is amazing. It's a PM5, it has meters, it has calories, it has wattage, it has games, it has Bluetooth connection so you can go against other people in the skier. It's got everything. What I love about the screen, guys, is it's about output and you, the player, have to put the input, right? I do the work, it gives me a reading. You can't cheat that. And then the last thing is going to be the uh, flywheel here. It is just like the flywheels that you see on the rowers. We've got a damper setting. If you wanna learn more about, about the damper setting because it is not a resistance thing, um, then go to the Concept2 website. They've got a great explanation on the, uh, on the uh, flywheel. Uh, I'm sorry, on the damper setting. And then we have the platform. You may or may not have a platform on your skier depending on how it is uh, posted up at your gym. Some people actually have just this upright mounted onto the wall. We don't have that type of area, so we've got our platform. And those are the basic components of your skier. Now we're gonna go into the how do I ski version of this video. A lot of times when people are new here, I just have them jump on. I say, hey, grab those handles. Let me see what you got. Maybe you've never done before, that's okay. And I see a lot of this. People go, whoa. It's like someone pushed them off the skier. It's very interesting, but it happens, guys. So it, it, when, when you're new to the skier, what I always like to tell people is take the pinky toe, set it up even with this silver screw that is on the, uh, on the skier. If someone's a little bit shorter, I'll scoot them up a little bit. And remember, this isn't where they're gonna stand forever. This is just a general place for them to start. You've got different phases. You've got a catch phase, just like you do in that row. You've got your pull phase here at the bottom. So, at the top, you do not have to reach your hands all the way over the top of the, the, top of the skier. I'd like a slight bend in the elbows. Lats are turned on. This movement starts with the, that's right, the hips. Just like a lot of our other movements in weightlifting and in rowing as well, the hips drop first, that's where our mass is, and then the arms follow after. This isn't an arm only movement where we're just using the arms, okay? My hips drop, my arms follow. At the bottom, at the bottom of this ski, the hands are right here, mid thigh. You do not have to pull your hands all the way back. You may get a slight bend at the bottom depending on what kind of uh, what kind of action you have in the wrist. I try to avoid too much wrist drive back here because what happens is when people return, slack is created in that band for just a split second and over time that's gonna take away from the efficiency of your skiing. So at the top, slide in, in the elbows. I personally go slightly to my tippy toes every single time. Uh, that may or may not be a wrong or a right thing. I don't suggest learning that way. I suggest learning with your feet staying flat on the platform. Again, dropping the hips first, hands coming through. 
Now, at the bottom of each pool or each stroke, do not drop the chest down and round your back. I see this happen all the time. People get tired, they start to get a little lazy with their technique, it's killing your efficiency. Chest stays up tall, eyes stay forward. There's no need for the chest to drop. You wanna be able to keep that airway open the entire time. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. The other thing that I see, Travis, why don't you come this way just a little bit, get my good side is the butterfly wing. Whoa, whoa. Guys, you probably saw that on the internet somewhere by someone who was huge, going just all at it. Look, just because people do it on the internet doesn't mean it's right or true. Just keep those hands inside. If you remember basic math, fastest way from point A to point B is in a straight line, right? There's no need to come here. We talk about the slack in that rope. Slack is created when we come here, boom, and then we hit. Don't do that. Hands straight up and down. Okay, that's all you need. Now, the last thing I'm going to talk about is one of the things on this ski erg, especially if it's on a platform, that drives me crazy that you need to stop because, again, it's all about it being efficient. As people stand here at the very back. We'll come to this side real quick. Okay, their feet are back here. They're my size, a whopping 150 pounds. And watch what this skier does. Do you get, are you getting the whole thing right now, Travis? Watch this. It bounces like a low rider in East LA. And guys, that is so unnecessary. What's happening there is you're standing too far back and you're actually pulling the skier towards you. It's not that you're so strong that you're making this thing hop, it is that you're pulling incorrectly. This pull should be straight down. I could even stand back here and still pull straight down and not get that done, right? It's not popping up. But if I'm in position correctly, that thing should never bounce off the floor. If you learn the skier techniques correctly, guys, you can find a skier probably at a gym near you that no one's using. It can be one of the greatest tools you ever add to your repertoire. So, concept to skier. If you've never done it, try it. If you don't have one, buy one. <laughs> See you guys.